Hey guys, Steve from PC Budget Solutions here, and it's time. The sub 300R build is done. We got some benchmarks going here. Really excited. So the question is, can you go on Craigslist and buy a couple new parts and game for less than $300? Well, in one moment, you guys are about to find out. So guys, this is the spec. So I have an AMD FX6100, 3.3 gigahertz, six core with a nice deep cool cooler, a gigabyte 970A DS3P motherboard, one eight gig stick of DDR3 1600 megahertz. Can only squeeze out a Western Digital Black 750 gig hard drive. I am using a 240 gig SSD external for the gaming, so there's no bottlenecks. A deep cool case and then I also bought a C Sonic power supply and a MSI R7 374 gig GTDR5 so that is the specs that we are currently working on. now we have cost so total $298 10 there's a $5 mail and rebate but I got the base system, which is the FX 6100, the cooler, the board, and the case for $75 off Craigslist. I then went on Newegg and got a single 8 gig stick of DDR3 memory, a Western Digital Black 750 gig hard drive, and a Seasonic power supply all from Newegg brand new. I picked up the R7 374 gig about five, six months ago for about 50 bucks, which was kind of nice. And last but not least, is Windows 10 Home from King Win. Got that for $27. So, $298, assuming I get the mail and rebate. Technicality, yes, but I completed the task at hand. So, let's go ahead and take a look at how this performs. So, World of Warcraft. I had to redo my testing methodology because earlier from the previous clips the high-res textures weren't loaded in yet so it was actually much lower frame rates than normal now interestingly enough while it was pretty much a single threaded game why the mins and the maxes were so off the chart on 6100 i'm not sure i actually replicated this six times in the flight from dalaran to star song refuge and running at level seven settings with uh, FXA turned on and that's it no vertical sync these were the results so average wise it fell behind the Intel chips no surprise there but the it, when you look at the minimum and the maximum frames it was not a very nice smooth experience doesn't surprise me that it didn't perform as well but it did perform a lot better than what I had expected now some of that might be due to the fact that the card might be carrying it there's extra VRAM things of that nature but the actual processing power, honestly, really surprising being that the architecture just is not that great. So, I don't have results for the i5 system from last time. I don't have everything hooked up with that, but I did rerun this, the uh, dual core hyper threading. And, of course, I ran the 6100 system. The dual core honestly performed pretty well, better than the 6 core due to, obviously, the architecture difference. But... Overall, they both offer, I believe, what would be playable frame rates. So, sub $300, honestly, at this point, is not looking too bad. But let's look at the next game and see if that holds true still. And now we have GTA 5. 1080p DirectX 10 high settings, right around 1.8 gigs of VRAM. The FX6100 fell so far behind the other two chips it was still playable but probably would have to tweak the settings the cpu power just isn't there any way you look at it in this particular scenario the dual core did better you know even though it's about the same clock speed but that single thread performance made all the difference in this scenario but let's take a look at the very last benchmark and see what we got and here we have 3D Mark, which honestly, it performed pretty well. It didn't beat any of the other two chips or GPUs in any particular settings, but it performed, I would say, well enough across the board. It really seems that the last particular test was more of an anomaly with probably with the core design of the FX chip, but 
overall, I would say that in this scenario, they're pretty close. I think you're really getting a really good value for $300. So conclusion time, and you guys can see some of the benchmarks and the shots that I took of my beautiful masterpiece here. But the question was, was can you gain for $300? And I believe the answer to that is yes. Can you gain max settings 1080p every game? No. Medium high for the most part? I would definitely say yes, no doubt about that. However, there's definitely a lot of outliers and things to consider i got some really good deals there could be better deals they may not be as good deals around where you live you may get parts that don't work if you don't have a bit of parts of testing to verify things work or they were misused or overclocked beyond their specification things of that nature you definitely take a pretty big gamble trying to buy something off of craigslist and piecing things together for the cheap but if you can do it and it works you can get by at least until you maybe have enough money to build a higher end computer. Now, the question is, and I'm gonna be looking for feedback in the comment section below, is it worth spending maybe an extra $200 for a little bit of better performance, but something brand new with warranties? So that's gonna be the million dollar question. But I think today, I think we answered the question. You can game for $300. So guys, do me a favor, like the video if you liked it, disliked it if you hated it, Share it on your social media platforms. If any, if you think anybody on your social media would benefit from watching it, definitely send it their way. And you can see everything that we purchased uh, for this video in the comment section below. You can see how to purchase those from Amazon. It does help us out a lot. Thank you guys very much. This is Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I will talk to you guys later on down the road.